AEDT 1170U, Psychological Foundations and Digital Technology. Module 5, Video Clip 5.1, Theories of Learning. This clip will provide you with a historical overview of three schools of learning. Classical Conditioning with Pavlov, Operant Conditioning with B.F. Skinner, and Observational Learning with Albert Bandura. As you review the learning theories, begin to consider how they might apply in digital situations. These may be online learning, online gaming, social communities, or even online addictions. Here are the guiding questions for this video. Describe the major theory of classical conditioning through Pavlov's work, and how might classical conditioning be applied to the digital world? Describe the major theory of operant conditioning by Skinner, and in what ways is operant conditioning visible in online environments? And finally, how does observational learning apply in digital environments? Learning could be considered a relatively permanent change in an organism's behavior due to experience. So by definition, experience is key to learning. We learn by association, and our minds naturally connect events that occur in sequence because we associate them. Simpler animals can learn simple associations, such as training a dog's. Well, maybe not my dog's, but they suppose they can still learn. So thus we call this type of learning associative learning. There may be two stimuli, as in classical conditioning, or a response and its consequences, as in operant conditioning. Conditioning is the process of learning these associations. In classical conditioning, we associate two stimuli and learn to anticipate events. For example, we learn that every time we play online poker, we might win. So a variable schedule of results means we go back just in case we might win again. In operant conditioning, we associate a response and its consequences so we can shape the behavior that we want. For example, texting a friend usually has as a positive consequence that you receive a text in return as your social reward. So this means we learn that texting is a positive experience. And finally, observational learning is when we learn from others' experiences and examples. There is evidence to show that some behavior, including violent behavior, increases as a result of watching certain violent video games. Pavlov performed classic experiments using dogs salivating to tones in order to demonstrate classical conditioning. And Watson followed the work of Pavlov, and his work argued that although it is biologically influenced, most human behavior is mainly just a bunch of conditioned responses. So his work influenced psychology for the, really the first half of the 20th century and focused on behaviorism. Both Pavlov and Watson did not like the idea of mental concepts such as consciousness, awareness. They believed that the basic laws of learning were the same for all animals, whether dogs or humans. Do you agree? Those of you who are dog owners may or may not agree. Let's take a more detailed look at classical conditioning. What Pavlov did was he paired various neutral stimuli, such as a bell tone, with food in the mouth to see if the dog would begin salivating to the neutral stimulus alone. And after several times of placing food in the mouth with a bell tone, the dog began salivating to just the tone alone. Can you think of some examples where this would apply in the digital world? Here are some terms to remember. The unconditioned response would be the salivating in response of food in the mouth, which happens automatically without any learning. And the unconditioned stimulus would be the food in the mouth that triggers salivation. After learning occurs, we have a conditioned response, which means that the salivation is triggered by the bell tone, and the conditioned stimulus is the actual bell tone that used to be irrelevant to the animal but now causes a conditioned response. Some people might argue that we're conditioned to respond to technology. Do you agree? Applications of this are basically the use it or lose it phenomenon. In acquisition, which is the first stage of classical conditioning, uh, we derive the behavior and we elicit a conditioned response. Extinction means that we have diminished the conditioned response. Basically, we've stopped practicing or we've stopped responding to that simp stimulus. Spontaneous recovery means that after a rest period of an extinguished response, we can actually regenerate that res learned response. 
Generalization means our tendency to respond to stimuli that are similar to the condition of stimulus. For example, for a toddler who's taught to fear moving cars, might also respond the same to trucks or motorcycles, whatever is in the street. And discrimination can happen. Pavlov's dogs learn to respond to a particular tone and not to other tones. So that's a learned ability to distinguish between the conditioned stimulus and other irrelevant stimuli. I'm not really sure my animals could do that. Pavlov and Watson were early behaviorists, and they underestimated the importance of our cognitive processes, our thoughts, perceptions, our feelings, and expectations. And classical conditioning treatments that ignore cognition have some limited success. We now know that an animal's capacity to learn is constrained by its biology, and there is a definite difference between pigeons and people. Some practical applications of classical conditioning might be where a drug counselor advises an adult addict to steer clear of settings that are associated with previous drug use, or using an aversive and negative experience related to using that can reverse people's positive associations with it. Let's move on to operant conditioning with B.F. Skinner. Skinner designed an operant chamber called the Skinner Box, where basically he chained a rat to shape its behavior and press a lever to get a food reward. He called this learning process shaping where reinforcers such as food gradually guide the actions that you want towards a desired behavior. And if you've ever tried to train your animals, you know what this is. The trainer builds on the organism's pre-existing naturally occurring behaviors, such as eating. In online shopping, for example, or online gaming, we are progressively rewarded for continuing to play or buy with points or other rewards. Some of the principles of reinforcement in operant conditioning are as follows. The positive reinforcer is the reward that strengthens the frequency of the behavior. The negative reinforcer means we're removing something negative in order to strengthen the desired behavior. A primary reinforcer is something like food that meets a biological need. And a secondary reinforcer is something that gains its power through its association that we learn with the primary reinforcer. Continuous reinforcement means we're rewarded every time it occurs, such as a video game when we get points and partial or intermittent is a desired response that increases greater persistence and resistance to extinction in the long run. Reinforcement schedules can vary in classical conditioning. The fixed ratio means we reinforce the behavior after a certain number of responses, correct responses, and the variable means we reinforce after an unpredictable number of responses. A fixed interval schedule means you reinforce the first response and then after a fixed time period versus a variable interval where you reinforce the response after varying time intervals. And there are different results for each of these. Skinner didn't consider, really, that cognitive processes could affect learning and behavior. We now know that we can develop cognitive maps and mental representations of our surroundings, and that we move beyond things like reward and punishment, so that learning in human beings is a very complex process. What are the applications of operant conditioning? Well, in schools we have things like reward and punishment. In businesses we have employee performance rewards and consumer behavior such as collecting aeroplan points are rewards uh, and also in drug use and abuse rewards and punishment are, are factor in treatment of that. Skinner's belief that a good education needs immediate rewards might be evident in any kind of web-based learning where we can get immediate feedback for correct responses. Finally let's move on to observational learning. This is an important one given our world of social media. Bandura was a pioneer in social learning and observational learning. He did a famous Bobo doll experiment that showed that kids would learn to be violent with a doll after witnessing an aggressive outburst. He also said that antisocial models have antisocial effects. Prosocial models can also have prosocial effects. So let's think of some of the um, implications for this in kids watching TV and violent TV or violent movies. Here are the synthesis questions for this video. First, how does technology condition us to respond in certain ways? What rewards reinforce our responses to technology, as in operant conditioning? And how do you think exposure to violence or virtual reality changes our learning experience and our perception of what is actually real?